Martin Wood, it's exciting to be back with you after so many years away from Stargate to come back here at GateCon and be able to talk Stargate again and see old friends and old faces. Uh, let's just start by sort of getting the, the big picture of when you look back on 10 plus years of Stargate, 12, 14 years, the series was in production. Uh, uh, how did Stargate change you as a director, as a person? Well, Stargate, Stargate made me as a director. It, uh, um, I was given a chance to do um, everything in Stargate, and, and most directors don't get that kind of time span to experiment in a show that, that evolves like that. A lot of times when you have a series, it can't evolve in the, in the, the uh, mega leaps and bounds that Stargate did because we were evolving a technology while we were doing it. We were, we were moving... Um, uh, forward at such a, a massive rate with the way that digital technology was working, the way that special effects and visual effects were, uh, were advancing. Every year there was something new for us to try. Every few months there was something new for us to try. Suddenly we weren't locking off things when we were, we were, we were doing uh, puddles anymore. Suddenly we were, we were panning through it. Then we were running with handheld cameras while replicators were following us. And things. The, the, a lot of what you're seeing today, we were on the cutting edge of that at Stargate um, because we were on the air for so long and we were able to hey, this is a new lens that's being used. Hey, this is a new lighting technique that's used. And for me, as a director, I was able to evolve with that, and I, I learned how to do everything I know how to do on Stargate. Are there, I know you made the shift in season one from assistant director to starting to, to direct your own stuff with episodes like Solitudes. Mm -hmm. uh, is there an, an episode that stands out in all that canon of time that is near and dear to your heart, not just necessarily because it was the you think it's the best thing you did, but because it's dear to you. Well, Solitudes was was uh, particularly <clears throat> is very memorable because it was the first one I got to do. Um, Matter of Time was one that uh, it, it was a real brain twist for me, and that was the one of the ones that was the hardest for me to think of um, to conceptualize with Brad about how we were going to do some of that stuff for a matter of time. <clears throat> I really enjoyed matter of time. I really enjoyed um, a solitude. Uh, no, not solitude. The one, the the, um, the submarine, the, the Russian submarine. Watergate. Pardon me? Watergate? No, Watergate was fun, but it was the one that preceded that where we were, uh, where the replicator shows up in the, in the submarine. Um, yeah, Small Victories. Small Victories. Small Victories is one of my favorites, and I, I'm not sure why. I just had so much fun doing Small Victories. Um, of course, Rising, um, uh, The Eye in the Storm, uh, Lost City. I mean, these are all the, the, the epic big ones were the ones that I thought were so much fun because, because they were epic and big. You know, I, I look over some of the, uh, the, the ones that I did that were, they were very contained. And I think, man, I, I, there wasn't any show that I didn't like doing. You know, you'd think that politics would be one that, that was the first year too. Um, but you'd think, oh, it's just, it's a clip show, so why would it be so much fun? Well, it was fun because I had to keep thinking of different ways to get into these things, you know, into these clips and stuff like that. Everything was fun. Everything was, was interesting to, to me. Um, but yeah, those big ones um, were always the most fun for me. You guys developed over the course of those years, you developed a, a vocabulary, obviously a visual vocabulary for the shows, for SG-1 and for Atlantis. And there's both, it seems, consistency between the different Stargate series, and are there differences as well when you were approaching an episode? Yeah, I wanted to, uh, when, I, when I made uh, the set for Atlantis, when we, we started designing the set for Atlantis, there had to be things that were uh, familiar to us that we brought with us. Um, uh, but then we also wanted to find things that were um, that were unfamiliar because it was a totally alien sort of place for us. And I think that that uh, um, uh, just because of that, the, the tendency was to always try and make it look more like uh, uh, like uh, um, SG One, and uh, we kept pulling it away, saying, "No, no, the consoles are too much like the consoles that we have 
um, back home, let's not make those things happen. And when we started, uh, even things like the puddle jumper and stuff like that, we wanted everything to look and feel like it was found articles rather than things that we built. And then as we started to hybrid things, even then it was still, no, we're, the, the materials that are available to us are not the materials that are available on Earth. So let's not do that. Let's not do, you know, um, let's not make them the same. And that was an intention, uh, was to not have them as, uh, when you saw the, the, when you saw it on screen, you instantly knew which one you were watching. Um, you know, even our color palette was different uh, in, in um, Atlantis than it was in, in Stargate. And it's funny because the art director was the same art director that we moved from one to the other. But uh, uh, Bridget was, was very much uh, on board with, let's, let's make it look different so that you knew when you watched it on television, oh, that's Atlantis. Uh, and because we're, we're, you know, we're doing these crossovers with the, the uh, characters too, you know, and that's why when we, when we did Lost City, it was so interesting because we were starting to find that mix in Lost City and, and, um, and we were trying to find implements and things like that that were like even the chairs, you know, that we used had to be something different. Is there a shot that sticks out uh, when you think about going into the day you maybe weren't sure if it was going to work um, <laughs> There's really, just about it, it really everything off. exploded it, i wasn't sure would would work um uh, uh trying to find tilk's good side uh, was always a problem <laughs> and uh so if it was a heavy tilk show was gonna, oh, we're gonna have trouble with this um there were things like um the eye in the storm where there was so much physical effect that we had to, we were dumping 500 gallons of water every couple of minutes on, on this. Yeah, and, and, and uh, you know, my whole thing was, can Robert Davi hold up to this? Can Tori and can uh, David hold up to this? And so for me, I put myself in the set. I directed from the set. So when it was raining, when it was pouring, when everything was happening, I stood there with them because then it was harder for them to complain about somebody standing down at monitors watching. I stood there and watched, being dumped on the same, and I, I insisted on that happening. And I would do that all the time when we did Grace Under Pressure. I was in the, in the uh, um, water with uh, David and Amanda. Um, when we did, uh, um, uh, when it, and any of the stuff we did in, Star, uh, in uh, Sanctuary, I would be in the water with them. I'd always be there with them. That, uh, those things were always hard because you, you are no longer in the element of a director at that point. You know, when we did Next Tuesday for Sanctuary, it was that whole thing about, okay, we're going to be five days. Robin and Amanda are five days in the water. I put a wetsuit on. I was there with them the entire time. Wow. You know, so those things were always, I hope this works. You know, you may hear me in the, in the back of some of these things when they do behind the scenes. Uh, that's one of my favorite phrases is, I sure hope this works. But uh, a lot of times it's very honest. <laughs> I do hope it's working. Well, to cut to the chase in the interest of time, what makes Stargate special and what do you think it needs to come back? What's special about it is uh, the four characters that we started with. That was what, what really was the propulsion for Stargate. It was uh, Rick, Amanda, uh, Chris, and Michael. And that was what started the propulsion with it. And the fact that it was um, Brad and Jonathan, Brad and Robert, and all the other writers taking these four characters that people loved so much and giving them these amazing stories so it, it, it if stargate's going to come back it has to come back with that kind of care taken in putting the cast together and that kind of care taken in putting the stories together and not just trying to to um bring stargate back do you know what i mean it actually has there has to be that kind of thought put into building a world the intentionality of the relationships yes absolutely yeah yeah, the relationship between these four characters. It, it, I, I should say it's not it's not Amanda, Rick, uh, um, Chris, and uh, and Michael. It's the characters of of Daniel, Carter, uh, Tilk, and uh, and O'Neill, 
that really started it. And then, and then, like I said, whenever I say that, I, it's not four characters. It was Don. It was, um, you know, it was, it was um, Ben. It was Claudia. It was everybody that came in to do it. Corn, you know, everybody that, came, that stepped into those, uh, you know, those, those uniforms. <clears throat> it was all about them. And everybody you see at all these conventions, you know, all these actors that were here, that's what made Stargate. And it was that intention to, to keep that story being told in such an amazing way. Mark Wood, enjoy your convention. Thanks for your time. Thank you for the time. I appreciate this.